Hello, in this video, I'm going to answer the question, what do I do if I want to stop hormonal therapy? We have lots of people commenting on our YouTube channel about endocrine therapy or hormonal therapy, they're the same thing, and wanting to stop treatment because they weren't feeling well. Before I go on, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to our channel. We put content out several times a week, so there's always something new to watch. So let me talk first about what is hormonal therapy, why do we use it, and what to do if you want to come off the hormonal therapy that you're on. Hormonal therapy is a key component of breast cancer treatment. In people with early stage disease, it can decrease the risk of the cancer coming back by nearly half. That's the relative risk of the cancer coming back by half. Hormonal therapy is used in people whose tumors are estrogen and or progesterone receptor positive. In a tumor that's estrogen and progesterone receptor negative, hormonal therapy is not offered. So what, do you, what should you do if you want to stop endocrine therapy? First, the key thing is to understand what's the benefit in your case. So the benefit will depend on the risk of your cancer coming back. So in people, I'll start with stage zero disease or ductal carcinoma in situ. With ductal carcinoma in situ, the cancer by definition cannot spread to other parts of the body. Thus, the benefit of endocrine therapy is to reduce the risk of a new cancer in the breast that had the DCIS and to a smaller degree, the risk of breast cancer in the other breast. And I say to a smaller degree because the risk in the other breast is really quite low. So in the breast that had DCIS, it can cut the risk by almost half. But if the risk is quite low to begin with, the benefit may be quite small. And if people are feeling poorly on endocrine therapy for ductal carcinoma in situ, because it's not improving your survival, your, your likelihood of living to an old age without the cancer coming back elsewhere in the body and threatening your survival, it's really a quality of life benefit. So if your quality of life is poor on endocrine therapy, then we're defeating the purpose. And there are people who would say, I'd rather go through another lumpectomy or have a mastectomy than be on endocrine therapy for five years. So I hope that makes sense. In people with stages one, two, and three breast cancer, the benefits are greater. There's a survival benefit as well as a benefit of reducing the risk of recurrence in the area of the breast or around the breast. That's local recurrence and regional recurrence. You can check out our recent video on local recurrence and regional recurrence if you'd like to. So it's helpful to understand what's the benefit in my case. Now I've told you it's, it cuts the risk by nearly half, but understanding what your risk of recurrence is, is the only way to figure out if that half is worth it. So this is where you have a conversation with your medical team and you ask, what is my risk of recurrence now that I've been through surgery and maybe radiation, maybe chemotherapy, maybe targeted therapy, and what is the benefit of endocrine therapy in my case. You can't really make a decision until you have the answer to that question. So let's say it cuts your risk of recurrence from 50% to 30%. You might say that's a pretty huge improvement, or you might say that's not enough. You may also hear that your risk of recurrence is 10%, and we can cut it to 4%. So the benefit in a given person depends on their risk of recurrence in the first place. In general, in people with stage two or three disease and people who were advised to have chemotherapy, whether they had it or not, the benefit is, is remarkable. And in fact, the benefit of endocrine therapy exceeds that of chemotherapy in most people with hormone receptor positive breast cancer. So you may feel I've done all these other things. Why do I now have to take endocrine therapy? And it's actually because the benefit is tremendous. And I think understanding that can be helpful. And only your medical team can tell you your risk of recurrence and the extent of benefit that you'll get from endocrine therapy. The next thing to do is make sure your medical team knows just how you feel. It's very common that, especially if you like your medical doctor, you won't let them know the full extent of how endocrine therapy is impacting your life. So instead of saying it's mild, moderate, or severe, or saying it's really bad, or it's not so bad, talk about how it's interfering with your life, because that gives your medical team a picture 
of the impact this is having on your life. So if you say, I used to sleep really well, and now I'm awake all night with hot flashes or aches and pains or whatever the syndrome is, the symptom complex you're having, that's very helpful. It's really illustrative of the impact the hot flashes are having. If you say, for example, I used to have a great intimate life and now I'm not able to enjoy physical sexual intimacy because of vaginal dryness, wow, that's a big impact on your life. We don't necessarily know what vaginal dryness means or bad vaginal dryness. We're not sure what that means and we may not feel we can ask more questions because that's what you gave us. So being really vivid about the impact of the symptoms on your life is so helpful. So if you say, let's say you're on an aromatase inhibitor and you have aches and pains when you stand up after sitting for a while, but they get better in five minutes, that's really helpful. If you say, I used to exercise and now I hurt so much and I know you've told me to exercise, but I can't, I'm in so much pain, that gives us more data. So I think I've made this clear. Let us know not only if the mild, moderate, or severe, but how is it impacting your life? It gives us a picture of the impact it's having because there are things we can do. For example, with the aromatase inhibitors, changing from one to another improves symptoms markedly in most people. Before we had choices, I've had colleagues who would stop the aromatase inhibitor for a month and then restart it and people would tolerate it better. We have no idea why. But changing from one to another gives people a great deal of relief in many cases. If you don't tolerate two aromatase inhibitors, it's unlikely you will tolerate the third, but switching to tamoxifen is probably going to give you more benefit than stopping altogether. And these are important things you can talk about with your medical team. The other thing we can do is we can often find ways to help you do better and feel better. So there are exercises we can give people who have aches and pains from the aromatase inhibitors. Sometimes changing the time of day you take the medicine has an amazing effect on things like hot flashes. Tamoxifen can be taken in lower doses. So the standard is 20 milligrams, but in people who say, I can't take this at 20 milligrams, five milligrams can be an option. It's not our first choice, but it's probably better than coming off tamoxifen altogether. These are recent changes in the things that you might be offered. The other thing we can do is start medications to help. So if you have a very high risk of recurrence and are going to get a great deal of benefit from endocrine therapy, it may be worth going on a medicine to counteract the side effects of your endocrine therapy. And while we really dislike putting you on yet another medicine to counteract the side effects of another one. If the side effects of that medicine are minimal and it can help you stay on a life-saving medication, we will do that. And so these are things that you should talk about with your medical providers. Have a conversation, make sure they understand the impact of endocrine therapy, make sure you understand the benefit and for many people, coming off endocrine therapy with minimal or no survival benefit is a reasonable option that you may be able to discuss with your medical team. If you really want to come off your medicine, you understand the benefit and you understand there are things that can be done to make it more tolerable, just talk with your medical providers about this because it's important for them to know the medications that you're on. I hope this has been helpful. I've covered a lot. Drop a comment or question below. Have you struggled with this? How did you get through it? Share your experience and tips with the rest of the community. Thank you so much for watching.